Good day, everyone. Thanks for joining APG's Inside iPreflight Genesis Navigator webinar. Whether you're a new customer or an existing customer with APG, we're happy to have you on board. Thanks for taking the time to spend 30 minutes with us today going through APG's latest and greatest iPreflight Navigator application. For those of you that are new to our webinar series, uh, we're hosting this via Microsoft Teams, which includes an interactive question and answer section. Uh, so please access that. It's on the right hand side of your screen. If you've not used it before, you can ask any question via the dialogue and that will go to myself and our moderators. Be happy to answer any of those questions throughout the presentation. And then also we'll pause at the end and answer uh, those questions live uh, for the audience as well. So please for, feel free to participate in that uh, throughout the time. We'll also be recording this webinar uh, so that if you'd like to share with any of your colleagues or any industry partners, you're happy to do so. Uh, so with that being said, I'll kick this off. Uh, what you're seeing on your screen is iPreflight Genesis. Uh, this is our latest next gen application uh, that supports runway analysis, weight and balance, and flight planning calculations seamlessly Im integrated uh, to make your flight operations more efficient. Um, within the application, all the calculations still function completely offline as you're used to with APG. I'll walk through our data update screen, which utilizes a simple and easy to use stoplight metaphor. Uh, as you can see with the icons along the left hand side of the screen and at the top, it indicates to you quickly whether your uh, updates are completely up to date. If there's any new modifications, perhaps your aircraft has had a weight and balance revision or the AFM uh, has been revised, triggering either a flight planning or performance data update that will trigger any of these updates to be computed uh, and available for download on your specific device. If you're looking at one of our demo accounts. However, this would be tailored specifically to each aircraft that you operate in your specific aircraft registration. And each aircraft would include the weight and balance, the flight planning, and the runway analysis download within that specific profile. Take a look at the overall footprint of the application. Uh, most users are going to be significantly below. However, you'll see that uh, this specific account has an overall footprint of 2.22 gigabytes, relatively small in the gist of uh, the modern iPad storage capabilities. Looking down at the bottom of the screen, you'll also see all of the data that's being updated that feeds into the performance and weight and balance calculations. Additionally, uh, we'll have a full uh, NAV database on board the device to allow you to quickly compute and file your flight plan information, leveraging the computing power of the iPad uh, to do all those calculations locally. All the airfield data is kept up to date and downloaded on a 28 day ARAC cycle. You'll see that there's a daily file available for update as well. Additionally, full historical weather information is available for uh, all airports worldwide, allowing you to easily do flight feasibility studies for any future flights you might have using historical winds aloft, as well as surface conditions. Migrating back to the home screen is where we can trigger a new trip calculation. I pre flight navigator, as I mentioned, leverages uh, all three core uh, pre flight planning functions. The flight plan, the runway analysis, weight and balance into one simple and easy to use tool. By selecting the plus icon, I can select the aircraft that I'm flying today. Again, this would be the list of your specific tail numbers subscribed with APG. As we're utilizing our navigator subscription, the flight planning icon is going to be triggered as a default. If for uh, some reason you did not want to trigger a flight plan to be calculated, you could turn this off and specify your required fuel and en route burn. With the flight plan enabled, this allows us to leverage our departure airport. We'll say we're doing a trip today from Aspen and we're going to the East Coast. We'll go to Teterboro. You can then select either your estimated time of departure or arrival. We'll say that we're doing this trip later this afternoon. When you hit the save button, it will also ask you how many passengers you have on board to automatically load. For the sake of this example, we'll have four passengers. So simple and easy to use. There's five parameters required, the aircraft, your departure airfield, your arrival airfield, either your estimated time of departure or arrival, and your passenger count. Just those five parameters are all you need to trigger that entire calculation from the flight plan all the way down to the automatic load of your weight and balance, as well as an automatic runway analysis for all departure, arrival, and alternate airfields. You'll see in a matter of about 10 seconds, it lands us on a summary screen. This summary overview screen provides all the information in a read-only uh, description for the pilot to review and see the status of the trip as it has been automatically generated. 
You'll see over on the top uh, dialog a flight plan overview, the route string, any altitude required fuel information based on how your aircraft is configured when this is set up with APG. In the middle portion of the screen, you'll see the runway analysis, again, utilizing the stoplight metaphor to indicate where your estimated takeoff and landing weight lie in comparison to any performance calculations or limitations that you may have for Aspen and Teterboro. You'll see all of the weather information is going to be predicated based on the estimated time of departure and arrival uh, that would have been selected during the calculation and trip sequence. You'll see that as we've uh, selected a date within our forecast range of 10 days, it will utilize that forecast data for trips that are selected within the hour of the departure that will use the most current METAR information. And then for trips outside of the 10 day range that will utilize our full worldwide historical weather database, both for the winds aloft conditions and the surface conditions for the airport, allowing us to accurately give you a feasibility check for any air or departures, trip sequences that are outside of that 10 day range, allowing you to build all those trips, do feasibility checks, and as they become in range of that forecast, continually update from the trips screen. Down at the bottom portion of the screen, you'll see the preliminary weight and balance calculation. This includes a souls on board count based on our default crew configuration, in this case, two default crew, and the four passengers that we selected at a trip generation. This will give us a quick uh, comparison to our forward and aft CG limitations for takeoff and landing, as well as a summary of our required fuel and inner burn based on the flight plan that was calculated. Any adjustments that you may need to make uh, to the trip time can be done via the date dialog next to the departure or arrival airfield. By selecting, you can quickly adjust your estimated time of departure if that needs to be modified. Again, the summary screen is intended to provide the pilot an overview of that trip. However, as much as you would like to dive into the trip, the pilot has the ability to do that within all of the three separate dialog screens at the top, the flight plan, the runway analysis, and the weight and balance. From the screen, I will navigate over to the flight plan where we can see a graphical overview of that flight. To keep things simple, we default all the layers off. However, there's a number of different weather layers that can be enabled for the specific route of flight. In this case, we can take a look at our forecast radar, toggle that information on to see what the weather conditions are along the route of flight, review that information. There's also a full turbulence layer available if you would like to turn on a turbulence overlay, this will overlay for the specified altitude what the turbulence severity is, as well as allows you to toggle by different or different flight levels to determine the severity of the turbulence along that route of flight. If there are any areas that would like to be avoided along the route of flight, we have a few different avoid functionalities to avoid different segments, temporary flight restrictions, or to create a manual avoid. To create a manual avoid, you can simply select and start drawing a polygon along the screen of areas. Perhaps there's some hypothetical weather over the Chicago area that we'd like to avoid. We can draw that polygon and route around that specific area of impact. To apply any changes that we would like to make to the map itself, we can simply select apply changes and make that adjustment. If there's any changes that we'd like to make to the uh, route string itself, these can be interactive as well. You can select to view, to change to another SID that you may like at the specific airport, or to simply exit. That's all uh, dialogue that's available based on your personal preference. The next sub tab within the flight planning dialogue is the route screen. You'll see that we've made a custom route now since we've made an adjustment with that manual void area. You'll see that there's a number of different routes that are displayed for the user to select. The APG select route, which is a time optimized route, a direct route for comparison, as well as recently cleared routes that may be available for the specific city pair. Uh, if any of those want to be modified, you can simply select and you can either continue through any avoid areas that you've created or remove those from the route of flight. Migrating to the right is the profile screen. This shows you the fuel profile as it's specified based on your reserve policies, any contingency fuel, et cetera. That's all set uh, as you configure your aircraft with APG. 
The altitude and speed profile shown in the middle of the screen shows the max shear for the uh, flight level that's selected in parentheses, as well as any additional uh, comparison charts for different cruise modes available for the aircraft. Within I Preflight Genesis, you can configure up to three different cruise modes to show time, as well as fuel comparisons amongst the flight level and the cruise. In this case, if we wanted to transition from our normal cruise to a long range cruise for this Challenger 350 aircraft, we could select at the same flight level and indicate that we're willing to accept a 12 minute increase, but a 277 pound decrease in fuel burn. As we make those updates, it updates and recomputes, as well as rechecks all of our weight and balance runway analysis calculations for any additional fuel that's required or any additional time, and updates our reports accordingly. Alternates can also quickly be selected uh, within the dialogue. Uh, perhaps at Aspen, we're going to add a, a departure alternate of rifle. We can quickly add that and it will recompute both any uh, additional fuel information as well as give us some dialogue regarding the emergency return calculation into our departure alternate of rifle. Again, we utilize all AFM data in accordance with how it's published to provide any emergency return or departure alternate uh, calculations. For the arrival alternates, likewise, we can select a appropriate arrival alternate or specify our own. In this case, we'll use Morristown as our primary alternate for the purpose of the calculation. Migrating over to the runway analysis tab, we'll be able to see all the automated uh, departure, emergency return, as well as alternate calculations that have been pre-populated for departure. Utilizing all the performance defaults that are set on your account, APG will produce this analysis. However, you can always quickly adjust runway conditions, flap settings, or any type of uh, specific aircraft setting that you would like to apply, as well as select any uh, different conditions for the analysis. Likewise, for the emergency return and for the alternate, it will show us any additional information. In this case, we could modify our specific departure alternate runway that is selected for analysis. If we needed to make any changes to the weather for any of these conditions, we can select the weather icon, pull in uh, a METAR, a forecast, or simply apply our own conditions. Again, computing offline does not require an internet connection to pull in uh, all this METAR information. You can simply enter a new parameter based on any outside information you have and apply that right into the calculation. Migrating over to the arrival calculation, it will calculate our runway analysis for the arrival and our alternate there at Morristown. We're able to review all of the information. Again, selecting on the max takeoff weight, we can see our details for the V-speeds. We're also able to take a look at our uh, landing distance available, make any adjustments to shorten that runway, either by a flat amount to the arrival or liftoff end, or specifically shorten our declared distances as required. Likewise, for the alternate, we can do the same. We can specify if required uh, for arrival, a required missed approach climb gradient. So if there is a required missed approach, we can specify this either by a gradient or foot per nautical mile to our minimum safe altitude and APG will perform that calculation utilizing the missed approach climb gradient data for your specific aircraft. Migrating back to the departure, uh, we can recheck uh, any of those figures. We can also review the graphical engine out procedure for that specific runway. Again, this is the engine out contingency procedure that APG provides for your vertical and horizontal obstacle clearance requirements. and allows you to reference that in conjunction with what the published SID or obstacle departure is, giving you some additional situational awareness as a pilot when briefing for this procedure. This can quickly be compared with any other uh, departure procedure at the specific airport by tapping the DP icon and selecting the most feasible departure procedure for you. Again, APG will provide and automatically select the most favorable departure procedure. However, this should always be compared during your briefing process. Migrating over to the weight and balance tab, you'll see that the four passengers that were specified at the time of the trip creation have been automatically loaded into the aircraft. These passengers can be reseated, removed as required and specified 
APG will handle any standard weight program that you have enabled on your specific certificate. Therefore, if you need to specify a uh, seasonal uh, varied weights, we can accommodate that as well as any standard weight segment uh, that you specifically have. Passengers can be loaded either by tapping on the icon or through the drop down. And passengers can be loaded by actual or standard weight. Up in the right hand corner, you'll, you'll notice an alerting functionality that APG has within the iPreFlight Genesis application. This alerting sequence allows you to actively monitor any active alerts for the trip. In this case, we'll see that we have a highlighted alert on this screen for the fuel on board. In this case, APG through the flight planning sequence has calculated a minimum required fuel of 6,500 pounds. In this case, it's prompting the pilot to specify their actual fuel on board the aircraft. In this case, we'll specify 8,000 pounds of fuel and apply those changes to the calculation. You'll see that that has a clear to the alerts that we had with the trip uh, as we have loaded uh, appropriate fuel on board. It's important to note that uh, we can either load fuel specifically on board using the standard load sequence for your given aircraft, or if you're operating aircraft that require custom loading uh, by multiple tanks, we're able to allow you to load specifically by each individual tank uh, for the case of an aircraft that requires that for weight and balance purposes. This provides you the percent MAC breakdown in comparison to the forward and aft limits of the aircraft. However, if you would like to view this graphically, you can view the in-flight envelope tab where you can view the, the max takeoff weight, the landing weight CG, as well as the BOW and ZFW zero fuel weights, as well as the fuel burn vector throughout all phases of flight. This is all checked within the overview screen. However, it's available there in the in-flight envelope as well. Now that all active alerts are cleared, we can migrate back to the flight planning screen and we can go directly into the filing portion. You'll see that all of our default information that's been maintained uh, in the APG administration portal has been defaulted uh, for your specific aircraft. However, if you have any MELs that need to be adjusted, they can be selected and applied within the filing form. When you're ready to file, you can file directly with the FAA, Afton, or Euro Control, and it will show the filing status updated uh, with any additional information that's passed back from the respective filing authority. Migrating back to the summary screen, you'll see that our told card has now been populated with all the information that's required. We'll include the graphical special engine out procedure that APG provides, as well as the textural version that you're used to, all emergency return information and landing information as well. The operational flight plan will show uh, all the parameters for the flight plan that's been calculated. And all of these documents will be created and shared within the trip folder. If your certificate or operations require, the weight and balance load sheet can be electronically signed using the signature icon, which will date and timestamp this information and keep this stored on the device. Any of these documents that need to be emailed or shared can be shared via the share icon to share the specific PDFs that have been generated. Whichever reports that you would like included in the briefing pack can be shared and via the share icon can be shared via email or to any application that accepts incoming PDF documents. If you'd like to share the entire trip uh, yourself, perhaps I'm flying with a co-pilot today, I can utilize the share icon in the upper right hand corner and I can share this trip with any of my colleagues that are subscribed to iPreFlight Genesis within my organization. Utilizing this dialog, they can migrate back to the trip screen and on their specific device, they would be able to calculate and download any shared trips that have uh, come into their device, either data or Wi-Fi. This trip is then stored on your home screen. You'll see that my Aspen to Teterboro leg is uh, then stored. Again, if I need to go in and modify anything, I can quickly open up that trip, uh, evaluate any changes that may have happened. I can now update that. Uh, if I were to, in the future, need to update, pull in new weather information, and generate any new revised update release documents for that specific trip. I'll migrate back to the home screen. You may have noticed for those of you that are current iPreFlight Genesis subscribers that we've added a new icon called Runway Analysis. This allows you to compute quick and easy standalone analysis, allowing you to leverage uh, some quick feasibility checks for future flights, allowing you to operate into 
uh, more airfields and get a quick calculation determining whether you can or cannot operate into a given field and also allows you to do uh, some interesting analysis for in route landing assessments. Perhaps if you need to divert to a different location or conditions have significantly changed from your original plan within the trip, you can quickly do that within runway analysis. Hypothetically, if we're flying this trip from Eagle to Teterboro and conditions deteriorate significantly at Teterboro, perhaps there's some thunderstorms that pop up. I can quickly grab the aircraft uh, that I'm operating. Again, this calculates all completely offline, not requiring uh, any type of internet connection if you don't have that on your aircraft. I can specify perhaps instead of going to Teterboro, I'll be going into White Plains and I can specify my time of arrival again later tomorrow afternoon. By specifying the calculate button, it'll trigger off that calculation and very quickly give me an answer on what these conditions are. If I'm doing an in route landing assessment, perhaps I can use the unfactored landing distance for my operation. And based on the planned landing weight information, I can quickly update this from my uh, default BOW of the aircraft to what my planned landing weight would be and quickly generate uh, any information that I need for my landing calculation and verify that I can indeed use that alternate airport. Once this is computed, again, the reports can be generated directly by selecting which, which reports you'd like to keep, populating and saving that information, which is then again saved from that main dialog screen that can be referenced. Again, if again, if conditions were to deteriorate from our original plan, that Eagle to Teterboro flight and perhaps both Teterboro and our Morristown alternates were no longer feasible. This allows you to quickly compute that analysis for arrival. The last item I'll show you within the runway analysis tool additionally is the ability to quickly uh, do a flight feasibility check. Perhaps uh, later this summer uh, we'll be doing a departure um, out of Eagle and we'll say that we're going to do this trip out into uh, the hot months here in Colorado uh, later in July. We can quickly determine using our historical weather database what our limitations are for the aircraft, utilizing again that full historical database to see exactly what these weather conditions will be. Again, at Eagle County, it's projected to be uh, 28 degrees based on historical averages in the middle of July and be able to see exactly what our obstacle limit weights are, be able to accept or deny any practical uh, feasibility checks. With those three different use cases today, uh, I'd like to open it up to any questions that anyone may have. Um, there's a lot of information to digest and we'd like to keep these webinars short. However, if you'd like to connect with us to learn more uh, for in-person demo uh, to tailor to specifically to your operations, uh, we'd be happy to set that up. Uh, our sales team can be contacted at sales at apgdata.com or by contacting us via the Q&A section. Again, please uh, ask any questions and we'll be right back with you to answer those questions live.